it's a very beautiful evening and I believe you're enjoying it. We are delighted that your eyes are on Church of Uganda Family TV. We welcome you to Flourishing Hub. This program is brought to you and the main purpose of this program is to make sure that they preach to you the gospel of transformation, you as a young person, you as a youth. That is why it is centered around the young people being the best the best of what they can be. So you should be the best fashion of yourself. That is why Flourishing Hub is right here on Church of Uganda Family TV. Edwin Osni Mukhalazi is my name today, sitting in for Doreen, who will be with us next time. And we are delighted to have a beautiful people, guests here with us, who are going to share with us a lot of things pertaining our topic. But before we go any further, I want to give them an opportunity to greet us. Of course, we have uh, Herbert and Dr. Benta. We are delighted. Dr. Benta, we shall start with you. Kindly greet our viewers. Uh, good evening, viewers. I'm Dr. Benita Rumanzi. I'm the principal of Africa Preparation Institute. And I'm married to one wife and four kids. Thank you. Herbert. Yeah. It is now your turn. Yeah, thank you yes. uh, for hosting me once again. Uh, good evening, viewers. My name is Herbert uh, Sabit, I'm the founder of Young and Flourishing Foundation Limited. And also, like my friend has said, I'm also married to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> that is very important. Yeah, and we, yes. God has blessed us with three children. Wow, that is, that is interesting. So um, these gentlemen here are going to share with us a very sensitive topic uh, pertaining a young person. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that remember your creator when you're still young, before the decimal days come when you say, I don't enjoy this life. Mm -hmm. So this means there is something special about the youth. Mm -hmm. But we have also realized that the youth are a group of people that are used by everyone to achieve whatever they want. Mm -hmm. If it is politicians, they don't go for the old, they go for the youths. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, we've seen a lot, of, a lot of instabilities elsewhere. For instance, the ongoing massacre in Congo. Mm -hmm. You realize that it is the youths that are on the front mm -hmm. of this massacre. Mm -hmm. Even in Ethiopia of recent, mm -hmm. it was the youths on the front. Mm -hmm. And in South Africa, it was still the same. So there is a very big problem with the youth that everyone wants to use them. They're like a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. But then when uh, whoever uses them achieve what they want, mm. they are left down. Mm. So uh, today we are here to talk about a very sensitive topic, which is hope restoration among the African youths. Now, we are dealing with Africa because we want Africa to be transformed. And that is why Herbert and Dr. Mm. Benta are here. So we shall start from the, the very first thing, uh, the broad problem. What is this plight of the African youth? Uh, I'll start with Benita, Dr. Benita. Yeah, African mm. youth, mm. I think it is their time mm. right now to mm. think on how they can be self-reliant. Because when you look at what they do, they are being used without their uh, knowledge. They didn't know that they are being used, mm. but they, when you look at every politician, be it every political politician or whatever. I'm looking at the youth in, U in, in Uganda specifically who are going to the Arab world, who are going to, who are selling themselves to, to, to kind of slavery simply because they have nothing to do. But we are here tonight to help them restore their hope, to know that they have a plight that they can, uh, they can hinge on. Uh, look at the youth. Uh, who always, who, uh, always uh, capsize in the red in the in, in the Mediterranean Sea yeah. when they are trying to escape from Africa to go and look for greener pastures. But then, when you look at the opportunities that are available here in Africa, we can do without going uh, uh, abroad. You can stay around and know what you can do as a young person and you build your capacity and you're able to survive on your own. But now the leaders who are using them to massacre themselves in South Africa, like you said, in Congo, what is happening right now, it is high time the youth wake up and know their dignity and know what they are supposed to do and therefore 
they know that they are the leaders of tomorrow, they shouldn't be used, that they wait for tomorrow, they are the leaders now. They should imitate their lives right now and use what they have to get what they don't have. So this is why I encourage the youth, is don't allow anyone to use you. You are very important, you created the image of God, you can actually do something that the world will look at. And Dr. Benta, you talked about uh, the youths mm -hmm. being capsized in oceans as they are flying, as they are crossing they are to go to, 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 uh, to Middle East. Yeah. But um, of recent, the Civil Aviation Authority came out and said, oh, it is on record that over 200 young people fly out of this country daily. Yeah, so sure. over 200 daily mm -hmm. and this is a very big number mm -hmm. so if all our youths are going out of the country mm -hmm. then what are we, what shall we uh, remain with if everyone is going everyone is going because 200 people every day mm -hmm. so uh those are how many uh, one uh, one thousand the 14 uh, 1,400 mm -hmm. a week, a week yeah. and then a month, how many? Are, those are very many young people mm -hmm. moving out of the country. Mm -hmm. But, uh, Herbert, mm -hmm. what do you think is the problem? What do you think is, is causing all this? Yeah, mm. the problem actually is uh, uh, starts way back uh, 400 years ago. Mm. Uh, in 1619, mm. uh, when uh, the African slaves from Portugal uh, arrived in uh, in the USA. I think that's where the problem began. Uh, we were enslaved, and later, you know, there came partition, scrambled partition mm. of Africa. Mm. And uh, even when we claim that we got independence, uh, these colonials still uh, want to govern us, and they know where to touch. When you don't have money, you still remain enslaved. Mm -hmm. And they don't want us to be economically independent. So uh, uh, we are still enslaved uh, because we still think that uh, those guys who, uh, who enslaved us have a, a, a stake in our lives. Mm -hmm. That's why we keep going to ask them for help. That's why we keep going to, uh, we are using their curriculum in education. I, I, I feel... You also think that when you go to their countries, mm. that is where greener pastures yeah, That's are. where greener pastures mm. are. That's why they are being capsized mm. in the Mediterranean mm. Sea. But I think now the, the real slavery is not physical slavery, it's also mental, mental slavery. Mm. So if I was to talk to the youth, like now I'm talking to them, I think what we need to start on is uh, our mental... Uh, uh, our mental... How do I call it? Uh, we need to uh, to get rid of that enslavement mm -hmm. mentally. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have a problem uh, with uh, the youth going uh, out to, uh, in, the mid, uh, in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. If they were going out to uh, as dip, as diplomatic uh, to do to do good jobs there, but if they are going out and uh, you hear they are. Uh, uh, removing their kittens, you hear they are going just for being a house girl and uh, and being uh, uh, you are a graduate, but you go there to to become uh, a and security maybe. guard, mm. uh, a mid really. Uh, the challenge is that uh, I will not blame the youth, and I also not blame uh, the government the leaders. Mm. Uh, I don't want to blame anyone, but uh, we need to look for practical solution. Mm. I think it will be a disservice uh, in this show this evening mm. if we don't discuss on the what is it that sure. they can do, sure. the practical steps mm. that the, the youth can really yeah. do to make sure that they are not being used. Like, mm. like my brother has said, uh, it is very disheartening what is happening in mm. Africa. And uh, we know that uh, selfish leaders uh, within and outside uh, they come to use uh, the youth, uh, being politicians, being even religious leaders, being anyone they want to use the youth. Uh, because one, we are, uh, they are energetic. That's number one, they are energetic mm. and they have ambitions. And uh, if you use them, if you use them to, to do the right thing, mm. Hmm? Let's, let's uh, turn away from using them to, to destroy ourselves 
are choosing them to do the right thing. Mm. So me, that's why I, that's where I want this discussion to go. How can we uh, yeah. use the youth to do the right thing? Mm. How can we? Uh, uh, how can we? How can we call so and so? come on board mm. and from from what what we have impact what we have planted in their mind mm. they are surviving uh, today before this for uh, uh, today before this evening uh, before coming here mm. i received a, a call from a young a younger lady and she she amused me she said i read your book uh, the young and flourishing mm. i read your book and uh, I wish I, I read it when I was in this, in this near six. Mm. Yes, she, she has already finished uh, uh, university and she has been two years looking for a job. Mm. So she has told me from, from, from the book, uh, I am going to enroll uh, to, to study on mushroom making. Mm. Mushroom making. And I'm, I know that I'm going to, after that, I'm going to start a business for mushroom and I will be supplying in the supermarkets. Mm. That's the uh, exact thing I'm talking about. Uh, what can we do? Hmm? She, she's going, and of course she has, a, she has brought that idea. No one has brought it for, from, for her. Mm. She has thought, after reading the book, she has thought that I'm going to study on how to make mushrooms and I'm going to be supplying it to supermarkets. Those are the things that we would want to, we want to discuss this evening mm. to make sure that the youth out there stop being, uh, uh, stop being misguided and, and misused. Uh, to, yeah, Africa, we are one. Yeah. Huh? It's just that those guys came, uh, the colonials came and, <laughs> and, and just partitioned. Mm -hmm. eh? They scrambled and partitioned. They just partitioned. Uh, uh, they just partitioned our, 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 our continent, our country. To create so the, the now, boundaries. And now, the I don't, uh, they may also not sound like politicians, <laughs> but it is most likely why after, after, after Congo joining East African bloc mm. eh, community, there is this fight. Why is it there? They, these guys don't want us to unite. Mm. We need to stand as Africa, not as... Now, uh, uh, the, late, uh, the late Mama Gaddafi mm. was talking about, every time we would speak about African unity, yes. African unity, mm. and you see what happened. So we need to stand uh, uh, we need to stand up as African youth. If we are to fight, let's re re fight for unite, uh, unity of Africa. Yes. Yes. If we are to fight, so the, fight we should fi the fight should be how can Africa be united? And how can Africa actually help other continents? Not suppressing fellow Africans. Not mm -hmm. suppressing fellow Africans. Mm. Thank you. Wow, this is this is so interesting, and that the uh, conversation is getting hotter. Mm. <laughs> so you talked about you, uh, you talked about the hopelessness mm. of, of the African youth, mm. and probably this could be the reason as to why they are overused. This is the reason as to why everyone sees potential in them mm. that they can help them achieve what they're fighting for. Mm. But before we even get to what we can do and how we can help the youths, mm. what do you think is the cause of this disillusionment, this hopelessness? Because mm. you realize that someone is so anxious when they go to school, mm. but by the time they graduate, they've already lost the hope. Mm. Someone yeah. is already thinking of uh, a, mm. uh, a lot of things. Mm. Of recent, universities have just carried on graduations. And you realize that someone graduates, but they've already made up their mind. I can't do anything in Uganda, or I can't do anything elsewhere. My only destination is Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm doing all this, but I'm going to Middle East. People are even selling land here in Uganda, mm -hmm. taking a case study, mm -hmm. to go to Middle East. Mm -hmm. why do you, why, what is the cause of this hopelessness? Because you said it is now with the, with the mind. Mm -hmm. It is a mindset that people are adopting. What do you think is causing this? Mm. I'll start with Dr. Benton. Uh, thank mm. you very much. Adrian? Yes. Uh, what I see is the problem of Africa mm. is that the youth, they were, like the mindset, shows them that they cannot do anything without looking at uh, what the government is offering mm. or what so and so is offering. Mm. So they have been groomed in a such a way that they don't think by themselves but someone has to think for them. Mm. And therefore, right now, I want to encourage the Africans, the African youth, that you can do something. Instead of rushing to the Middle East mm. or to somewhere else, 
because of, uh, I mean, selling yourself for, into slavery, mm. it's high time you thought of what you can do for Africa. I would quote this, the president of um, America, Abraham mm. Lincoln. Mm. He said, don't ask America what America can do for you, but ask yourself what you can, you can do for America. America. So if we can adopt that as the youth and we become very innovative, and we think to use what we have right here. We have a number of resources mm. that we can engage in and use. But, but the youth, they need leadership. Mm. The leadership has left the youth behind. They just tell them that you are the future leaders, but they are not telling them that right now you are a resource, a formidable force that can work to make sure you, you, you become self-reliant. So, when you so talk about I would leadership. encourage, mm. I would say, that the youth, their problem right now mm. is, I mean, they need to come out of that mindset mm. of thinking that so and so is there to help them. Mm. They think for themselves. Government are too young. Yes. They shouldn't now be used to butcher themselves, to butcher other people. Mm -hmm. eh? When you, it is very much unfortunate when you see the young people mm. being used to kill others. It happens as a result of unemployment, as a, a result of loss of uh, hope, the hopelessness, mm -hmm. but they are, there is still hope mm -hmm. that can be restored mm -hmm. in this youth. Mm -hmm. And it is us, the leaders, mm -hmm. to come up and help these mm -hmm. young people, put them in groups mm -hmm. that they can survive on this by themselves. Mm -hmm. How about, mm -hmm. Why have, have the youth lost hope in everything. Mm. They have lost hope in their very leaders, the mm. leaders they entrusted mm. power with. Mm. They have lost hope in the education. Mm. They have lost hope in everyone and everything. Mm. And they think the only solution is to fly mm. out of Africa mm. and go and whichever suffering they're going to go through doesn't matter mm. as long as they have left Africa. Mm. Why, what do you think is causing this? Mm. I think uh, the youth are right to to lose hope. Yeah. Yes, they are right uh, because first of all, um, you spend uh, you spend over uh, like uh, seventeen years mm. and so in studying yeah. mm? from nursery to primary, secondary to university or to other institutions, and uh, the teachers what they are teaching you is. Uh, uh, they are just preparing you to go and look for jobs. Mm. And they keep telling you that the key to success is education. education. Mm. These uh, days they have turned um, it. Mm. The, 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 the key changed. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the padlock changed. <laughs> the padlock changed. Yeah. So, uh, when you hear the stories, uh, if, if when they go on social media, they hear stories on uh, how so and so has spent two years mm. or three years looking for a job and the job are nowhere, what can they do? Mm. Because the, uh, the education system has taught them that they cannot survive without being uh, employed. employed. Mm. They can't survive without being employed. The education system has not taught them that uh, actually you can go to a community and uh, collect garbage. Mm collect garbage and every month every month uh, house house A is giving you 20,000 another house is giving you if you have 20,000 houses around you can collect garbage and get education has not taught us that the education has not taught us that actually you can uh, you can learn how to make mushrooms mm. uh, and supply in supermarkets mm. it has not taught us that we can uh, we can uh, you can make bread mm. and supply. So what it has taught us is that someone who is clever to make bread should employ you. And there are very few people who are making bread. Mm. Eh? There are very people who are making mushrooms. Eh? And you are waiting for them to employ you. Uh, so to me, I think they are right to be desperate. And because the, why they are losing hope is they are lacking mentorship. People are not mentoring the youth, mm. and by the way, now it is it, it is being, and I'm very happy about it. It is now a song when you hear people on radios and uh, televisions, and they are talking about mentorship, yes. mentoring the boys, mentoring mm. girls, 
so there we lacked uh, we lack mentorship and uh, if we focus on mentoring the young people uh, we shall and also we shall get one by one me actually i don't i, I don't fast the numbers though at young and fresh we are targeting over 50 million young people uh, uh, developing them into world class leaders that, that 50 million we start with one by one you don't get everyone uh, on board at this time yes. you touch one by one so me i'm on the journey to helping the african youth and i am happy that the uh, the people that have pass through my hands they are there outside the flourishing mm. so mentorship education mm. uh, and also like i mentioned uh, lack of jobs most people think that uh, jobs are not there and indeed they are not there mm. but work is there jobs might not be there mm. but work has never been you have never failed to to have work i think mean, um, you, you yeah? briefly you briefly differentiate the two yes job jobs and, and work, work. Yes. because the jobs are not there but work is there work is there mm. uh, job is uh, going to uh, going to sun sows farm mm. going to sun sows farm and you and you work at the end of the uh, the month they give you the salary mm. they take home and uh, and work is getting uh, make looking for a solution eh? going to a community where there is a challenge and you look for a solution and by looking for a solution you are getting a paid for for that solution you have solved mm. so that is job i mean that, that is, is work that is work mm. and uh, by the way you can work uh, you you can work at home you can work in the community you can work everywhere there are very many things you can do and that's what we teach uh, at young and flourishing in the mastermind groups mm. there are very many uh, uh, there is a lot of work outside there because if you see a challenge you know that that is a business opportunity yeah. for you mm -hmm. if there is a challenge if you are in a discussion you hear people talking about to uh, about to uh, arsenal and uh, and man you and what you know that there is a business opportunity out there mm -hmm. uh, maybe it could be people like sports and you start uh, like the way I started the Chibanda. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could. <laughs> people started the sports betting. Though I, don't, I, I hate it. I don't like it. I don't mm -hmm. encourage any use to go into that. Mm -hmm. But they see, they see a challenge and they make it into a business. Mm -hmm. Any challenge around there mm -hmm. is a business. Uh, I, when I was, uh, I, I, I think I had started uh, uh, in 2007. I went to this side of Nigeria, mm. and we, I, I found there was no clinic. Eh? There was no clinic around. So I, told, I called my friend who was a doctor, and we started a clinic there. And the first month, do you know that I've never seen a business in the first month you get breakthrough? Yeah? You, you get profit, you, you break even, and you make a lot of profit first month because there was a need in that community mm. so what is the need out there that someone can uh, can can solve what is the challenge out there that someone can mm. solve that's what it will uh, make the use to uh, to to differentiate between a job and work and work wow thank you so much Herbert. and at this point we shall take a commercial break but when we come back we are continuing with this discussion and we want now to derive into the untapped potential of you as a youth. Thank you much for watching Flourishing Hub, Young and Flourishing Hub. We are delighted that you're still on Church of Uganda Family TV. Edwin Austin Mukalazi is my name sitting in today for Doreen, who will be with us and next time. And today we are looking at restoring hope among we the africans who seem to have lost hope in our own countries or even in our own continent and before the commercial break we are really looking out for the problem what could be the problem and we came to realize that one of the biggest problems is lack of mentorship but also the education system that we have which trains us uh, to start the graduate write applications go for job interviews and sit in people's offices but 
it doesn't give us room to explore our potentials and the creativity. So in this particular segment, uh, we are going to discuss and see what can we do as the youths mm -hmm. instead of other people coming to use us and then we start lamenting, hey, it's me who helped that one to be where they are. But then mm -hmm. what did you do to yourself? You who help others to go where they are, to go the heights they are in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are here with Herbert and Dr. Benta. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Benta, yes. we now want to uh, discuss about the potential, the practical potential mm -hmm. of, a young, of a young person, of a youth, the untapped potential that youths have, that have not uh, realized, that have not opened their eyes to. Oh, thank you very much, Edrin. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is what we call population uh, dividend. Mm. The population dividend is when you look at the, a, a particular category of the people mm. and how they can be beneficial. When you look at the population in Africa, many are the youth or mm. young people. Mm. So the young people can be harnessed. That is a population dividend. That is an untapped potential as a labor force that can be used to transform Africa from poverty, ignorance, and the diseases. So in this case, I would tell the young people, as they are their majority, mm. let them not be used, as we said in the previous mm. episode. But right now, they look at the solutions to their problems mm. in Africa. We have a number of resources. We have a number of natural resources, uh, maybe more than all other continents mm. in the world. So if we can utilize the mineral resource, the technological resource, the human resource, and, and, and uh, the, yeah, the mineral resource, we shall be able to develop. In Africa, it is where agriculture can do better without even using the kind of mechanisms that other people are using. It is a shame to find that Africans, we are importing wheat from Ukraine. We are saying that the Ukrainian war has affected African economy and therefore we can't find food. No, it is a shame. In Africa, it is a place whereby the staple food can grow wild, mm. like banana. Mm. They can grow wild. So if the youth can engage in agriculture, that is a practical bit, mm. if they can engage in agriculture, they are a formidable force that can produce enough food for Africa and also for export. That's one. Number two, the youth, uh, ladies, they can enhance the technological bit that is there right now. And their labor force is, is sold to the international market. Instead of them going to the Middle East or to, the, to, or to Europe to work as house girls and, and maids, they can now go there as... as I would call it as not expatriates, that is a big word, but they can go there as technical workers mm. and a technical workforce. Mm. And in that case, I would say African youth, it's high time you woke up, look for the problem. When you solve those problems of Africa, mm. then it will be commensurate with the payment. Mm. What you solve is what you reap. You reap. Mm. So that is what. I encourage them to do. Wow. So, Herbert, mm. it now gets to you. Mm. What do you think can be done mm. uh, to solve these problems mm. that are affecting a young person, that are affecting the youths of Africa? Because the youths are the country's stronghold. Mm. If a country has no youths, mm. then it doesn't have manpower, mm. it doesn't have a creative mind, it doesn't mm. have a lot of things. Mm. Mm. On, uh, on Saturday, I was discussing with my friend, she's called Sarah. She, during the lockdown, I was amused, uh, and she's employed. I was amused during lockdown. She, uh, she taught herself using YouTube on how to, how to make uh, a fashion design. Mm. She taught herself, and she went and bought uh, a turning machine, and now she's making... Uh, uh, clothes, she's making uh, uh, those uh, bridal something, Mishanana, mm. uh, those for, uh, for ladies. And she's making money, actually, she's too busy. You cannot now take her out. <laughs> <laughs> you 
can't take her out because she's so busy. I, I was with her on Saturday and, he, and she was telling me, no, there is a my Mugore, she's waiting for her, her clothes. So, he, uh, but, but she taught, she taught herself using YouTube. Huh? So we have, uh, uh, we, uh, I can encourage younger youth, uh, uh, the youth to do what we call self-skilling. Mm. Uh, self-skilling, yeah. yeah. These days you can even be a surgeon by teaching yourself <laughs> on yeah. YouTube. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube on how to, <laughs> yeah, so uh, self-skilling, uh, uh, there is a lot of information out there. What do you want to do? Uh, which kind of information can you use that will help you to uh, to to be self reliant and employed? And number two, he has talked about uh, agriculture and the the practical bit for someone who is uh, starting a startup person uh, is an example I can give uh, my uh, my neighbor in a, in a certain town in actually in a Sinjiro whom I gave only 100,000 and he bought, uh, he bought seven hens. Mm. He bought seven hens uh, after I had encouraged him because he, he looked so, he was of course very poor and mm. but he had a banana plantation and uh, I gave him, he, he, he started rearing free rangers, uh, these Chichiga uh, Chinyankoli uh, hens and uh, uh, by now, I think he has over 30, 40. He sells each at 20,000, sometimes 25,000. And now he is it's paying his school money. fees. Mm -hmm. yeah? So we, I don't know why, why the government uh, does not uh, see this. Huh? Why, should, uh, why should you always spend um, billions and billions and billions? But just 100,000, I gave someone transformed his family, his entire family just 100,000 transformed his entire family. So the practical bit, if you are, there is no excuse. Uh, and I normally say this, although people, uh, they say that uh, maybe I'm a sadist, mm. that poverty is a mindset. Uh, because that person, I have learned in, in Ibujuko, my, my neighbor, when you see, uh, his uh, his banana plantations. It is full. Of, it is in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> the shrubs are so many. Mm. Uh, now, may I did my banana plantations. His children, his sons are, are stealing my bananas. Mm. Yet he has his he, uh, rusuku, and it is it is too big. than my mine is just three acres. Mm. But uh, he laziness, eh? laziness. They they don't have what to eat with such a kind of land. Well, we, can, we can utilize land, uh, whether it is uh, one acre, whether it is 50 decimals, whether it is uh, 12 decimals. You can utilize land and you, you feed someone. By the way, there is always someone who is hungry. Yeah. And when you produce food, you make money. Mm -hmm. So when you see someone who is hungry, you know that's an opportunity. Like I mentioned, that's a business opportunity. Um, Another thing is uh, technical technical skills. Mm. I I also have a construction company, and uh, I I I got some some time back. I I normally get jobs uh, in the banks, and uh, you know they are excellences. Who mm. is one of the most banks blending excellences the, the top on, uh, top on the agenda. So, do you know that I import? Uh, uh, the carpenters. I, I get them, uh, those guys to do the partitioning, I get them from Kenya. Uh, Why? Does that it then surprise you? Because when you get someone here, you will do short work and you will lose the contract. Eh? So, how the, uh, what you need to focus and learn and try to be excellent in what you are doing. If you're a carpenter, please make sure that what you produce is a top notch. No one else can, no one else can do it. Uh, no one else, you are not, you, no one else can compete with you. Uh, but now these days, you give a carpenter uh, uh, some job. Uh, he will tell you that come after three days. Mm. You come after two weeks, 
it has not been done after character. Uh, character is also one of the things that is uh, dragging us uh, behind. Mm -hmm. Even a tailor, if you are, if you have a tailoring machine, make sure that you only get jobs that you can on, promise what you can deliver. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. Promise what you can deliver. <laughs> Actually, I normally tell people you should uh, rather under promise and you de over deliver. If you know that I'm going to give it within five days. Tell them that I will do it within seven days, mm. and the fifth day you call him and give uh, you call her and give her the, as the clothes yeah. as a surprise. Mm. That person will never forget you. True. Yeah. And so they and, the and, and they will you. tell others about you. Mm. Don't uh, don't. Uh, uh, <laughs> recently, I was talking with some young people. I normally have discussions with young people. Mm. Uh, he was saying that uh, uh, I have. Uh, a, a decoration business. Mm. So I tricked him and I asked him a question that uh, uh, so if I have like two or three functions in the day, can you do them? He said, yes, I can do them. <laughs> so you see his mind is focused on money. money. Eh? Not perfection. Um, not perfection. Rather accept small and say I can do this mm. and you do it so well so that you become busy. Because people will always uh, look for excellence yes. everywhere. If you excel in what you are doing, mm -hmm. and if your mind is not on money and it's on producing excellent product or excellent service, then you will flourish. Mm -hmm. No doubt about that. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. This is so important. So, um, just to ask you, uh, I'll start with Dr. Benita. Mm -hmm. We have the parish development model. The, uh, the government in the new mm. budget has re has included mm. a lot of money. Mm. They are, they are a in fact, the target group are the youths mm. in this parish development model. Mm. Do you think this can be a solution to some of the problems of the youths here in Uganda? Uh, well, uh, yeah, this is the Church of Uganda family TV. <laughs> and uh, I want to quote this scripture mm. that is in the Song of Solomon. Mm whereby Solomon was writing, he said that, I am black and lovely, mm. but my brothers made me keep my, their vineyard, mm. and mine is not yet kept. So uh, this comes in line with uh, what Sabit Herbert was saying, mm. that the neighbor has a banana plantation, <laughs> doesn't take care of it, and then runs to his, which is taken care of. Mm. This is exactly the problem of Africa. We have a lot that we can do, mm. but we have not harnessed it. Then we look at those who have tendered for their vineyard, mm. and we go and work in their vineyard. So uh, the parish development model is very good if it has a good policy. I would think the policy is not just giving the youth money mm. or women groups money, uh, to start up businesses they have not practiced or they don't you know they don't have experience about it is high it is it is good that they first invest in training them to get the skills and the capabilities to utilize that money otherwise if you just get the money give it to this person who has never had experience in the business chances are they will bring the money because they don't they, they don't know the value of that money mm -hmm. so they will just use it or misuse it so I would appeal to the government or to the people who are involved in the policy development model let them invest much more in capacity building than giving people startup capital mm -hmm. because the startup capital you don't know how it came in you know that maybe you buy the chicken. I believe the person you gave the chicken, you had to first tell them that mm. uh, <laughs> this is how you do yeah, it. Sure. But yeah. otherwise, if you don't, mm. people don't value the money they have not sweated for. Mm. I think this one you should know it. If you have not sweated for this money, you will take it for granted. But if I have a brother, a brother dropped out of, a, out of school some time ago, Actually, there were two. They dropped at the same time. One of them uh, decided to cut the trees and burn charcoal. Eh? Burn charcoal to get the startup capital. Another one pushed my father that he should give him capital to begin the, what? the business. At the end of it all, 
the one who cut the trees and burned the charcoal, right now he's a multi-time millionaire mm. in his own way. But the one who got the capital from my father's hard cash, right now, he's still wanting. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes. So I would say, let money will not solve the problem. Mm. And not, I'm not going to mention it. Our like <laughs> uh, leader said, but money will not solve the problem. But they need to be, we need to invest in building their capacity first, mm. and then they will be able to manage their own money. Mm. Like at Africa Population Institute, this is exactly what we are doing. Mm. We come up with startup groups, but we first tell them how to use the little they have to get what they don't have. Mm. We first teach them, if you get 10,000, you can begin a business. Likewise, if I get 100,000, I can still begin a business. And if I can get a trillion shilling, mm. I believe I can also yeah. what? Start, a, start business. a business. So what matters is the level where you begin from. Mm. And we've seen the young people here in Uganda, and in South Sudan, and in Kenya, we've seen them begin businesses and they are doing very well mm -hmm. under the mentorship of uh, Africa Perpetual Institute. Mm -hmm. So the Flourishing Hub is here offering the mentorship program, mm -hmm. so the youth, it is your time mm -hmm. to now utilize mm -hmm. that mentorship. Sure. But if you quest for just receiving money, mm -hmm. it will not be a solution. Mm -hmm. Herbert, mm -hmm. you realize that in Uganda we have people who borrow money, loans from the bank to mm. buy household materials. Mm. Someone gets a loan to buy chairs, mm. or another one gets a loan to buy a coffee set, mm. and all that. Mm. Now, how about, because they have to, to, to repay this loan mm. with, a, interest. with an interest. Mm. And how about if they're given this money um, of the parish development model, which has no interest? Mm. Do you think this will be the solution mm. to the problems that mm. most of our young people are mm. facing? Mm. Let's be frank. Uh, uh, we are we are forty uh, forty something million. Forty four million. million. Yeah, forty four million, mm -hmm. and uh, seventy percent are, are, are the young people. Yes. And uh, how much money is being given per parish? Mm -hmm. It is seventeen, 17 million. Seventeen million. Seventeen million. And uh, and you think in a parish how many how many <laughs> youth are there? There is there is no money that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, actually, to me, I think... Uh, but they are budgeting for 100 million in, per parish. Including, uh, including corruption, uh, what, they, what will be stolen. Mm. Uh, let's speak the truth. Uh, I think parish development model, I have read it, I have read the pillars, and of course mindset change is there. Mm. I hope they will focus on mindset change uh, before they give out money. Mindset change, because now, uh, uh, we have had in Tandikwa, we have yes. had uh, Bonava Gagawale, mm. we have had. Uh, so it is one uh, thing that is coming. Uh, Mioga. It's the same thing uh, is coming in, in another word. It is, uh, it is the same thing that is coming in a different. Uh, but uh, uh, to me, I think the mindset uh, change is very important. Like he has said, first train the youth actually don't give them money. Mm. To me, I would not give them money. I would train them and, uh, and show them how to get the money. Mm. Uh, otherwise, when you give them money, they will say, this is our vote. Mm. And that's what they have been do saying. I, I saw in the, in the papers, uh, someone, was it in Cassesso of Fort Potro, the uh, 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 wealth creation, they gave uh, they gave him uh, uh, a what Frisian cow and he killed it. He butchered it <laughs> to sell and eat meat. <laughs> eh? Mindset change is very very important. So parish development model, yes, it is good because I read and saw there is a pillar on mindset change. Mm. If the, that pillar was not there, I would say it is totally wrong because. Bonal uh, Gagawale, Mioga, and what has been coming, and uh, this is the same. But since it has mindset change and that training, mm -hmm. I hope it it will. And uh, at uh, at uh, at Young and Flourishing Network, we uh, maybe the government should look for us mm -hmm. <laughs> because we are we are we are pla we are planning 
and where we have started in all the villages. In all the villages, we are creating groups of five, five, five. And for us, we are not giving them money. We are training them, each one according to their talent, like, uh, like the, way the Bible says, each one according to their talent. We are training them and uh, they are progressing. You will hear that uh, in, uh, in Kapuchogwa, you will hear that in Guru, they are young and flourishing youth that are changing the community mm -hmm. because we have trained them. Uh, their mind is now open that they can, uh, they can survive, they can actually uh, make a lot of money even in their communities, within their communities. So it's not, don't give them pigs, don't give them money, don't give them, just give them knowledge. Give them knowledge, uh, tell them that yes, you can do it, and show them how they can do it, and they will do it. They will get money, including, uh, including even going to, uh, to wash cars, uh, going to dig for the, that money, and you get capital for yourself, mm. not being given hard, uh, not being given hard cash. She has given an example: someone who who who, who burnt charcoal and sold it and got capital, and someone who got hard cash. That is, that is it. If you are given, like he has said, if you are given hard cash, mm. you will start thinking they are buying me for my votes. Mm? Now, or even appreciate uh, they will say this, uh, this is for the project I don't want to, mm. to mention here. They will say now this is for the project. Mm. And you know, there is a lot of misinformation. Uh, uh, they could normally call it radio cattle. There is a lot of misinformation <laughs> out there. And the youth believe it. And when they say, ah, now this money is from, uh, from Hosey. Mm. They will say, okay, let's eat it. It's from Hosey. Let's mm. eat it. It is yeah. our money. Yeah, it's <laughs> our money. After it's our money. I think let's have the mindset change. That's why I think this show uh, is here to help people, to help the youth out there, but also on ground. Those who are unable to, to watch uh, Church of Uganda Family TV on ground, we are going there uh, through the mastermind groups. Yeah. Wow, that is, that is very important. And yeah. as we wind up, what is your last message to a young person watching you right now? Yeah. A, a piece of advice mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. uh, pertaining, as we are wrapping up mm -hmm. all this uh, mm -hmm. entire, uh, entire topic mm -hmm. that we've talked mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. we've discussed from eight, the hope restoration among mm -hmm. African youths. Mm -hmm. So what is your last message to them? Mm -hmm. uh, dear my brother, dear my sister, uh, you are right to be uh, hopeless because you seem to, the environment around you seem to be unfair to you. But here I call you, come and join Young and Flourishing and we shall help you. We shall make sure that you, you get what to do and how to do it and together we shall transform Africa. And again, uh, secondly, my brother, my sister, fight for the unit of Africa. Don't allow anyone, whether a politician or any other person, to make sure that you fight your brother out there. We are the same. You are Muchiga, you are Munyankole, you are Muteso, you are, you are Gwandiz, you are somewhere in, uh, in South Africa, we are the same. Let's fight for the end of Africa. And let's not allow any, anybody, whether colonialists, whether uh, politicians, to disunite us. And together, surely that hope will be restored. Thank you. Wow, well, thank you so much, Herbert. Mm -hmm. Dr. Binta, what is your last message to a young person watching you right now? Okay, a young person that is watching us right now on Family TV, uh, there is a saying that says, if you want to reach far, uh, I mean, if you want to reach far, run with run. It, run around. Mm -hmm. But if, no, if you want, if to, you reach want to reach faster, faster, faster mm -hmm. run around. Mm -hmm. But if you want to reach far, mm -hmm. run in a group. Mm -hmm. So as Africans, we need to realize our problem is in disunity mm. and in division. So the divide and rule policy is still on us. 
if they started with dividing Africa, cutting it into partition and scramble, and at the end of it all, they, they go back into even the countries they had already uh, separated. They also divide here according to groups and according to tribes. And then you go even according to tribes, according to the stepbrother and stepfather. So we need to unite. That is the most important thing in Africa. So that if I meet a Congolese right now, I take him as a brother. If I meet a Rwandese, he becomes my brother. If I meet a South Sudanese, he's my brother. And there we know that our problem is the same and is common. Therefore, when we unite, we shall stand. But the more we keep on dividing, that is the fall of Africa. That's the reason why we have not been able to achieve much as Africa. I would end with this. Most of the young people are struggling looking for a visa. I am a doctor, I have a, a doctorate. But getting an appointment at the French embassy, I'm going to France next month, getting an appointment at the French embassy, it has been a tug of war. I had to use, uh, to use people in, in the IGU, uh, IGU is International Geographical Union, mm. to write to the French embassy. But I had written and failed to get the appointment thinking that I'm also one of the young people who want to run away <laughs> from <laughs> Uganda to look for greener pasture. But I am here helping Africans. And even what I will be presenting at the International Geographical Union in Paris next month, specifically is for helping Africans. So as Africa, let us stand and know our stake and unite, and together we shall transform our continent and Africa shall be saved. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Benta. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in this whole discussion, one thing I would like to emphasize is self-skilling. We've had a lot of issues uh, of recent where people are using internet the way they want, people are using platforms to abuse others, and they end up imprisoned over their own data. Why don't you use that <laughs> data? To learn a skill that is going to enable you flourish mm -hmm. and you be someone, a better person, mm -hmm. and you also influence others. Where do you want to influence others negatively? Mm -hmm. Influence them positively mm -hmm. by flourishing. Mm -hmm. That is why we have Young and Flourishing Hub here on Chattopi and Family TV. Thank you so much for watching this show. It has been a pleasure having you. And right on your screen is issues at hand. We sign out. God bless you. <laughs>